Hello YouTubes! Welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. For those who don't know, my name is Chantel and I'm super excited for today's video because we are going to interview an expert on a really really cool topic. So I'm a marine biologist and my research specialty is in sharks and rays but I mostly focus on stingrays. That's like where my super specialty is um, and I'm not really up to date with like what is going on in the great white shark world but I have heard a ton of rumors and stories and all kinds of things about the great white sharks here in Cape Town where I live how they've pretty much disappeared over the past couple of years and there have been so many stories going around about why they're gone where they've gone what's happening and there's so much confusion and misinformation out there so today I am on a hunt for the truth. I'm going to speak to an expert in this area. She's going to explain to us what's going on, what is true, what is not true. So hopefully we can get to the bottom of this. I really hope you enjoy the video. Please hit the like button, thumbs up button, and let's get going. Yo guys, it's so windy in Cape Town today, it's ridiculous, but we're gonna be on our way. I just wanted to say, what do you guys think of my new mask? It's got sharks on, how cool is that? And it is made by Recycle Plastic. It's a local eco-conscious brand here in Cape Town. I'm gonna link them down below, they're called Active Wear. They make the most beautiful masks and tights. Please go check them out, um, yeah, if you need a new mask or new tights. Alright everybody, we are here with Sarah, the CEO of Shark Spotters. Um, she is an amazing woman, as I said, she's super knowledgeable about this region. We actually have a very cool map behind us of False Bay, which is the bay we're going to be talking about. Um, so, hi Sarah! Hello, thank you for having me on your YouTube channel. We do! It's really, really great to have you. Oh, thank you. Um, as I said, she is the CEO of Shark Spotters. So, to just kick off the conversation, I was hoping you could give us a rundown of the whole situation of great white sharks in Cape Town before everything changed, why shark spotters were started, when it was started. Okay, so False Bay is a really important aggregation site, or historically has been an important aggregation site for white sharks. Um, they're actually in the bay year round. During the winter months, mm -hmm. they are at Seal Island where they feed on the young of the year seal pups. Can we see Seal Island on this map? It is just here. Yes. It's a, actually a very small <laughs> island. It's got 70,000 Cape fur seals like squished Whoa. onto this island. And when the seal pups, so they give birth, the seals give birth in sort of like December time. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes into autumn, the seal pups learn to swim and they're really easy to catch for sharks. So it's like easy pickings. <laughs> so historically we've had like big aggregations of uh, white sharks here. In fact, I think it's the second largest aggregation of white sharks in the world. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Yeah, the largest being Hansby, just up the road. Yeah. And so uh, um, they aggregate there, they feed on the seal pups, mm -hmm. and then as the seal pups grow up, they become uh, predator aware. They're a lot uh, harder to catch. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that's sort of when spring and summer starts, the water warms on the inshore here in False Bay, and then the sharks would move to the inshore where they feed on fish and stingrays and other smaller shark species. Okay. So False Bay is an important area for white sharks. Obviously during the spring and summer months when they come closer to shore, that's also often. the time that we see them as shark spotters more often, but it's a time when the people are at the beach as well. Yeah. So that's where you have that spatial overlap where we're sharing the same space with the white sharks and that's where we had a number of incidents happen. <laughs> So in about the early 2000s, um, there was a couple of, well, quite a few shark bite incidents in False Bay. A few of them were fatal. And so that's really what kicked off the Shark Spotters program in 2004. <laughs> the idea behind it really is to um, reduce the spatial overlap between people. So we warn people that a shark is in the area. It's a potentially dangerous shark and it is close to shore. Yep. People then move out of the way. The shark moves on having no negative impact on the shark population and like a minor inconvenience for people. And yeah. um, so it's like an environmentally responsible and socially responsible approach to shark bite mitigation, which is we were one of the first people in the world to sort of take that approach. Shark Spotters is such a cool organization. I actually worked here for a little bit two years ago, helping them with some research. They do groundbreaking 
conservation they also do a ton of research which is really really cool so they're great people to talk to about this whole great white shark situation which is what we're going to get into now so things started to change in 2016 yeah so around about 2015 2016 um, we started to see sort of very slight decline in shark activity and white shark activity close to shore. And then from about 2017, we saw quite an abrupt decline. So whereas between 2000, 2010 and 2015, we averaged about 200 shark sightings a year wow. at our spotting beaches. By 2018, that had dropped to about 50 shark sightings for the sure. year. So three quarter drop. Yes, and then 2019, I think we had two confirmed white shark sightings. Wow. And 2020, no confirmed white shark sightings on by the spotters on our beaches. Yeah. We had two um, for the whole year. One was confirmed by a um, aerial survey in January 2020, and the last one in December 2020 by a shore angler. Unbelievable. Yeah. So a really massive, quite steep uh, decline in shark activity, yeah. which was quite yeah. yeah. Okay, and then there have been. I've heard a wide number of rumors as to why. <laughs> Where have they gone? What are they doing? Why did they leave us? Um, can you maybe outline a few of those? I think let's, let's discuss the whole orca issue first, the yeah. killer whale issue. Um, there have been a number of uh, sort of theories as to why <laughs> this might be. Um, one of the sort of most standout theories and the one that we put quite a lot of weight behind is the arrival of these orcas. So False Bay has had orcas visiting for years and years and years. From the uh, early 2000s, there's records of orcas. But orcas are, um, each sort of like family group of orcas, they call it an ecotype, is very specific on what it feeds on. Okay. So we've had orcas visiting in False Bay for many years that feed on cetaceans, on whales and dolphins. Um, but in 2015, we saw the arrival of two individual orcas which were nicknamed Port and Starboard because their dorsal fins flopped over one to the left and one to the right. Okay. Then in 2017, so they were seen on and off over the next couple of years. In 2017, they came to False Bay and to Franz Bay. And it was at that time that we started seeing um, shark carcasses wash up. So here in False Bay... Great white shark carcasses. So, well, in False Bay, we had seven gill shark carcasses okay. because we used to have this aggregation site called Miller's Point. And one day they all just disappeared and it was at the same time that the orcas came through and then we found a, a carcass and we're very confused as to exactly what had happened, why all the, all the seven gills had disappeared, why suddenly we found this uh, carcass. And at a similar time, then they started having white shark carcasses wash up in Khansby up the coast. Okay. And so what they did was they took the carcasses and they did necropsies and they found these really strange like puncture wounds on the carcasses and they weren't quite sure and they asked around in the scientific community and turns out it pretty much sure, well, yes, 100% sure that these carcasses were predated on by orcas. Wow. The, it's really interesting because what the orcas were doing was they would um, work together cooperatively to rip open the pectoral girdle, so like the chest of the, of the seven gill shark or the white shark, and then suck out the liver. Because obviously the liver, I mean, in a white shark, the liver is a third of the body size. Super the, oily, super nutritious. Yeah, full of, full of uh, what's it called, squalene, yes. um, which is, yeah, very nutritious. So there's no point in eating the rest of the shark, just the liver is the really nutritious thing. And these are just two orcas that are doing So two this. orcas, as far as we are aware. Yeah. Um, and so you could see the puncture marks from their teeth. Yeah. And the way that you could tell that they were orca teeth or that particularly that these sharks, these, sorry, that these orcas regularly feed on sharks is that their teeth were very worn down. The puncture marks were from sort of very peg-like worn down structures. Okay. And of course, shark skin is like sandpaper. Yeah. So if you're regularly eating sharks, you're wearing down the dentition on your, the, yeah, so really interesting. <laughs> so do you think the white sharks have left the area permanently or they're sort of hanging around and then... I have no idea. <laughs> And I don't think we have any, I, I, I don't think, and there's no way to know, I think that's the really tricky thing, is there is no way for us to answer these questions really until something changes again, some of them. Oh, but the orcas have been coming, coming back. back, and so that's the thing, we don't know, they're presumably coming back because there's a lot of prey available for mm -hmm. them here, and in instances since then, back in 2017, I think 2019, they were seen feeding on seven gill sharks at Seal Island here, they were seen feeding on a bronze whaler shark in Miller's Point. Wow. 
so they obviously, I mean, they just came, they happened upon yeah, Fos Bay and were like, oh my God, Shark Central, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and so it just seems that the white sharks were just like, yeah. This is just, it's such a different way of thinking because we always see the great white shark as the top predator, the beast in the ocean, you know, yeah. shark week and dirt, uh, you know, the shark, the jaws music. And now we have the cute, cuddly killer whale that everybody loves. There is nothing cute and cuddly about killer whales, I'll have you know. They've turned into mm. the top predator of False Bay and they have chased, literally chased, the great white sharks out of this area. So it appears. So it appears. So, I mean, yeah. This, so we, we are scientists, so we know that everything comes with a pinch of salt. Um, this is probably one of the contributing factors to why they are not here. Are yeah. there any other sort of theories or reasons why scientists think that they have left? Well, there's kind of a million theories, um, but one of the other sort of uh, theories that has gained a bit of momentum is the idea of this um, demersal shark fishery. Um, so off the south coast of South Africa, there's a demersal longliners that targets sharks. It's uh, soup fin sharks and smooth hand sharks. And they've increased their effort a lot over the last um, couple of years. In fact, since about 2015, 2017. Okay. So they're taking out a lot of um, soup fin sharks, smooth hand sharks, all the kind of smaller shark species. And the, the thought is, is that these are prey for white sharks, that it's mm -hmm. an important part of their diet, mm -hmm. and that therefore, that by decimating that shark population, that then that's having a knock-on effect with the white sharks. Have there been any dietary studies on white sharks to show that other sharks are an important part of their diet? Um, but having spoken to Dr. Alison Koch, who used to work at Shark Spotters, she's a marine biologist, and basically did all her life's work on white sharks in False Bay, um, she was saying that sharks are an important part of the food source, but they're not the most important part. Mm -hmm. And the really important dietary, uh, um, really important parts of the shark's diet are the seals that we have during winter, yeah. and then the fish and the skates and rays that we have on the inshore. It's not to say that I don't think that it has contributed, it's quite likely that it has had some impact, but I don't think it's the overarching mm -hmm. cause of the white shark disappearing. Okay. So the demersal shark fishery doesn't really explain why? Particularly if it's diet related, because we still have an awful lot of Cape fur seals here <laughs> who are basically sunbathing at Seal Island, enjoying themselves, Freedom. having not had any predators there. Or, well, yeah, no white sharks at least for yeah. uh, quite a number of years now. Um, and we all know that climate change is a thing, and the earth is changing, and the oceans are changing. Do you think there could be something involved with that? So maybe temperatures are changing, maybe currents are changing. Could that possibly have an impact? We don't have these long-term data sets to see these long-term changes in environmental conditions mm -hmm. to see if that is what has possibly caused it. Yeah. So we've been collecting data on white sharks for it's about 15 years now, which is a long time. We've seen patterns, we're, from that we're able to say, okay, well we know that that during one year we'll see the shark behavior change at the yeah. winters there at Seal Island. But over a long period of time, that's, it's still 15 years, it's still not really enough to tell. That's why it's so important that we continue collecting data, we continue doing this research so that we can see over a long period of time. Because anecdotally, people said that in the 1990s there were no sharks in False Bay, it was very quiet. Okay. So perhaps this is a long term pattern. Maybe like a decadal trend or something. Possibly. So, so I think, um, and I do think they'll come back with no scientific basis at all. So, so like, just like a <laughs> just feeling. a hope. Just Please a hope. Come back. Um, mm. So, that, so trying to be a marine biologist and study the ocean is always really difficult. As we said, we don't know what is happening out there, what is going on. We can try and look at the data we've collected and try and make good guesses about what's going on we made a good guess about the orcas and but other than that we really don't know what's going on about them and i just like to make a quick side note and say that great white sharks are the most studied shark in oh, south africa oh, and probably yeah. the world um, and we still can't even make if we know so little about them <laughs> the decisions about what, we what know they're about doing yeah, it's and really there hard. are thousands of shark and ray species all over the world that we don't even have any data on. So, that's just yeah. <laughs> there's like so much opportunity, but it's also yeah. It's it's mad to think that you that we and everybody says, well, what happened to them? And we're like, well, we don't really know. Yeah. 
and we can't ask them, although people sometimes seem to think <laughs> we can. Um, and you know, and we also, yeah, we may never know. Hopefully, if they do return, will it will be able to go? Ah, oh, yes, it was the orcas because we haven't seen them for a while. Or oh no, like the orcas are still here, and now the white sharks are here. What you know? Yeah. And I think that's a good note to end on, actually. Yeah. Um. So I want to say thank you so much for thank chatting you. with us. Um. If anybody has any questions out there, if anything was unclear, please just pop it down in the comments below. Um, I'm happy to also suggest like further reading or further information. I'll put some links down in the comments below. So thank you. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. <laughs>